and, and then I was talking to him about the Peshitta. He said, we don't use the Peshitta. The Peshitta uh, Aramaic hey, text. Let me, let me stop here. This is the, the Mukhtar the of the, of the Aramaic, Orthodox Aramaic speaking community. church in Jerusalem. And, and the huh. head scholar of oh. the Syrian Orthodox Church. In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Wow. He is the top hmm. of the entire school. Wow. Okay? He is an old man. He's in his 80s. Uh -huh. Okay? Okay. And he said, we don't use the Peshitta. Hmm. The Peshitta is a later Aramaic translation from the Greek. Look, I've spoken to uh, scholars about this. And um, uh, in fact, uh, I sat down with this scholar at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And I told him, I said, you know, look, I, I, I've been, you know, people have suggested that this Aramaic Peshitta is the original Aramaic that Jesus, that Yeshua uh, spoke and taught. And, and that the Greek is a translation from the Aramaic. And this guy was, this guy was an Aramaic a scholar specifically of Syriac Aramaic, which the Peshitta is written in. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. Actually, when I, when I uh, walked into his office, he was looking at this giant, it was like this big, this dictionary of Aramaic, uh, of Peshitta Aramaic. Um, and, um, and I asked him for some proofs. I said, well, how can we know? You know, you're telling me, I mean, look, people will tell you that this Hebrew Matthew, that this isn't the original Matthew, that it was written in Greek. So why would I believe you when you tell me that the Aramaic isn't the original, the Greek is the Aramaic? I said, I need some proof. I can't trust your word for it. Mm -hmm. um, and this was just for me. I, I don't think I've ever even shared this. Um, I really just wanted to know for myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so he started off, he told me a bunch of linguistic things about how the Aramaic that Yeshua spoke was completely different than the Aramaic that the Peshitta is written in. It's a completely dialect, different dialect of Aramaic. He said it would be like the difference between German and Dutch. I mean, Dutch is the language they speak in Holland. I don't speak either of those languages. I read a little German. Um, German is called in their language Deutsch, and you have Dutch, which is the language of Holland. Originally, they were obviously a single language, but now they're incomprehensible to one another, unless you're from the border area there. But, you know, the German people can't understand Dutch, but, but they're that similar. The Aramaic that Yeshua spoke and the Aramaic the Peshitta is written in are similar, but they're also different enough to be Essentially, two, he said if it was any other language, they'd be called two different languages. But for Aramaic, we consider all these different, very vast different dialects one language. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. gave me specific examples I won't go into, but you know, you could look up at any Peshitta grammar, it'll tell you what those differences are. They're profound differences. But then he gave me some really powerful examples that was like, I'm like, this is it. It's the end of the story. We're done. <laughs> I wanted to know, and he answered it to me. Here's an example of one of the things he showed me. So the Hebrew word for covenant is brit. Now in, in American Jewish speak, we call it a bris. And that's because the, the Hebrew letter tav, when it has a dot in it is a t. When it doesn't have a dot, it's a th or in some dialects, s. So brit, brit, brit. It's, it's the same word, different pronunciations of Hebrew. So the word is brit or bris, like I had my bris on my eighth day, the covenant, the circumcision in that case. Genesis 6, 18, he says, I an established my covenant with you. The Greek word, and I'm showing you here, in, uh, let's show it on the screen. It, the word is diatheke. Uh, diatheke. Diatheke is the Greek word for covenant. Mm -hmm. Aramaic has a perfectly good word for covenant. The Aramaic word for covenant is kiyam. Uh, comes from the Hebrew word, the Semitic root, lakum, lahakim, to establish. That word also appears a form of that in the Hebrew connected to covenant. Um, but the actual word for covenant is brit, and you say lahakim brit. And so Aramaic takes that and it's, it's kiyam, that's the word for covenant. So if you looked in the, the um, well, let's look in the Targum. That's the ancient Jewish translation of the Tanakh. Mm -hmm. And there in the very same verse, Genesis 6, 18, it says, Ve'akem yat kiyami, and I establish my kiyam, my, uh, my brit, my covenant. Okay, okay. If you looked in the Pshita, if it was a translation, or sorry, if it was the original Aramaic, you would expect the word kiyam to be used all over the place yeah, as we're, the word for covenant. About like in, the, the, in the New Testament. In, right, New Testament. In, right. In Matthew, etc. Right. Now, um, okay, so Matthew 26, 28, I'm, I'm, I'm just choosing a, a verse here that has the word covenant. Um, it says, Yeshua says here, for this is my blood of the covenant. Okay, so in the Greek has for covenant has diatheke. Same word as in the, when it translated Brit in the Tanakh. Mm -hmm. So we have Hebrew okay. Brit, Aramaic Kiyam, Greek Diatheke. What do you think you have in the Peshitta? The Peshitta is Aramaic. Some people say it's the original Aramaic that Yeshua spoke. 
surely you have the word kiyam, the Aramaic word for brit, yeah. and that would be a great word because also you get from that the word lakum, which means to rise up. So if the oh. word covenant were connected to rise up and Yeshua is saying, this is the blood of my rising up of my covenant, that would be a powerful message. Mm -hmm. But in the Peshitta, you don't have kiyam, you have diatheke. Well, the, it's Greek. It's the Greek word for covenant. So I'm sitting there with in this Aramaic. In Aramaic. I'm sitting there with this professor of Hebrew University and saying, how can I know? I can't just take your word for it. People say the same thing about Hebrew Matthew. Show me definitive proof. And he shows me this and I'm like, <laughs> so we're done. <laughs> I said, oh. okay, I need a second witness. He gives me a second piece of evidence. And, and this was a long conversation. I'm not going to bring all of it. Second witness, he says, he says, okay, Nehemiah, what's the Hebrew word for law? I mean, you know, we were speaking in Hebrew. He didn't actually say that. <laughs> he said in Hebrew, the word for law is Torah, obviously. The word in Aramaic is oraita. It's a very common word in Jewish uh, usage. Oraita is the word for Torah. Um, it's from a similar root. Uh, perfectly good, good word for Torah. What do you have in the, the Greek word for Torah is actually we have it in English, nomos. Nomos. Mm -hmm. nomos. And for example, you'll say antinomian is someone who's against the, the Torah, against the law. Mm -hmm. Antinomian, anti -torah, antinomos. So what is the word we have in the uh, Pshita, in the Aramaic, which it, according to some people is the original Aramaic that Yeshua spoke, where scholars say it's a translation from Greek. He says the word is nomosa. <laughs> What? Nomosa. <laughs> Nomosa. The Greek, word, the Greek for... word is written in Aramaic letters in the Pshita. So I'm sitting with this guy uh, and I'm like, okay. okay, you know, we don't even need to go any further. And we do. We sat for quite a long time and we talked about other things. But I'm like, just from those two things, those two key concepts in both the Tanakh and the New Testament, covenant and law, Torah, and they're translated with Greek words rather than Hebrew words. That, uh, I mean, well, see, to me, that was the definitive yeah. proof. See, uh, you know, because of his uh, lack of English and my lack of Aramaic, uh, you know, he just said, yeah. you know, we, we don't use it. It's, you mm. know, it, it is a translation of a later, later Greek text because uh, things that weren't found in the early Greek text and are found in later Greek text are found in the Peshitta. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that, yeah. that, that is something I've known for a long right. time. But he said, no, we don't use it. It's not, yeah. it's, it, oh, we, and, we and use the, a, yeah. a, a, a different Aramaic text and, and, altogether. And don't misunderstand don't me. The Peshitta absolutely has value. When, oh, I, yeah. when I was working on the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, one of my jobs was uh, scholars would submit these uh, transcriptions of these Dead Sea Scrolls. And, and with the transcription of the biblical scroll were all the parallels in the Greek and the Aramaic, the Targum, the, which is the Jewish translation, and the Pshita, which is the Christian translation. And my job was to go check and see, um, first of all, does it say that in the scroll? Does it say it in the Greek, the Septuagint, and the, and the Pshita? Because and, there's a Pshita of, an, of the Old Testament as well. And does it say it in the... Um, in the, uh, in the Jewish Targum. And, and um, so we would reference these things. Scholars reference these things, they have value. As you mentioned, the, the Pshita is a translation of a Greek text. The Greek text has changed over time. So the Pshita is looked at, at what they call a version, which is a version meaning a, a witness to the Greek. Sometimes you'll find things in Latin that uh, in the, what's called the Old Latin that testify to an earlier Greek text than what survived in the Greek. So th these things have value. I'm not saying throw away the Aramaic oh, or, or, no. or, or even the Old Latin, which has value if you're looking at the New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, the Greek is the primary text of, of the New Testament that survived. That's just the way it is. Even for the Hebrew Matthew, I say look at the Hebrew Matthew, but the Greek is the primary text. The Hebrew, though, has sometimes, as a second witness, preserved things that are lost in the Greek. Um, so the Pshita has value as a second or even a third uh, hand witness. But, um, you know, but to say it's the primary text, I mean, covenant and Torah well, in Greek words, come on, there's a good Hebrew word for Torah and a good Aramaic word for Torah. Yeah. Neither now, of those I, are I used. I have to tell you yeah. a little bit of a story because I yeah. was part of a, uh, an antinomian cult uh, in, in, oh. the, in the past. Uh, it was a ultra dispensational uh, replacement theology. Ultra dispensational. Oh, yeah. I don't this, even know what that this, is, but okay. Okay, well, this is a mess, I'll tell you. <laughs> and it got all into all sorts of grace perversion, okay? Oh, That's how I know this stuff so well. Yeah. But um, uh, it was George Lamza mm -hmm. who uh, mm -hmm. finished the proofreading of his uh, Peshitta. Uh, New mm -hmm. Testament in the home of uh, of uh, uh, Victor Paul Werewolf. 
uh, who was became the leader of this uh, you know really big cult back in the uh, the late sixties, early seventies, called the Way International. Uh, that that's where he uh, finished up doing the proofreading of that text, and so uh, Werewolf took it upon himself to uh, to try to prove that this was the primary text of the New Testament. Mm-hmm. And so after a while, you know, he's got some pretty good scholars, you know, mm-hmm. some people that are good in Aramaic. As a matter of fact, um, we, we go back uh, to the very first computer-driven typewriter, and where it all developed was the IBM Typeball. At one time, they were long levers, you know, a typewriter. A computer-driven typewriter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I learned, you know, in this high school, this a had manual to be before typewriter. I was, this had to be before I was born, Michael. Oh, yeah, okay. long before you were born. <laughs> I, I think we determined I was in the Marine Corps the year you were born, okay? okay? So it's like, okay, so in high school, I am learning out of manual typewriters. You know, these long fingers come up with uh, uh, and, and hit the paper through the ribbon. Okay, that's how I learned. But the, the people that are really good in, uh, yeah. they had electric typewriters. Mm-hmm. And the way international, they developed an IBM type ball. First of all, the IBM type ball was there. It's a ball that it rotates and moves and strikes, uh, uh, strikes oh, the instead paper of those long through things the ribbon. Out, those long, instead like, of the long oh. levers, it's just a type ball. And so that's <laughs> just like that. And so you could then, this is the first thing it could be connected up to a computer. Oh, okay. And so this is before the dot matrix. And they were using this for the Aramaic. And they developed the type ball for the Aramaic text. Oh, and so they were wow. the ones that printed the Aramaic concordance. Okay. You know, they developed the whole thing. And so, so the research that you're department, part of is actually putting out a, an Aramaic text. Th- th- that's right. Wow. And they are okay. proving their job. I uh, say the, the job of the research department is to prove that that was the original text. Okay. Well, everyone on the research department, I know them. They're friends of mine. You know, uh-huh. uh, I was in the Marine Corps. They were at Chapel. They're different schools. And so, you know, I'm going to Bible school and seminary with these guys. Mm. And, you know, and afterwards, you know, after they were off the payroll, it said, you know, we were we were paid to prove things that are absolute nonsense. Mm. And that is what after the people, they left the cult. That's right. This. After oh, they left the okay. cult, said, you know, that was our job. You know, huh. we we uh, proved we, we proved things out and they were called in and said, you don't understand that the head of this organization has already determined this is what it is. And if you want to keep your jobs, you will prove that. Wow. And, and, and that wow. and that's how that's how it goes. And a lot of scholarship, mm. a lot of universities, you better be in line with exactly what we want wow. you to say, wow. or you're gone. Yeah. You know, you'll you'll not have tenure. I mean, you start talking about intelligent design in, mm. in an American school. Well, this is what yeah. Ben Stein proved. I mean, you are gone. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. already determined that there is no God, that yeah. there's no intelligent design, and if you say anything to even apply it, you are gone. Wow. Well, these people find themselves in the same position, but as soon as they were out, they said it's pure nonsense. There's no way that the Aramaic was a primary text. We were paid to prove it, and it's not true. You have been listening to Hebrew Voices with Nehemia Gordon. Thank you for supporting Nehemia's Makor Hebrew Foundation. Learn more at nehemiaswall.com.